Hey, y'all, I'm Kim Stewart, host of Book Marketing Mania, where we talk about all the things to help you meet new readers and market your books online. Today, I've invited my friend, Wren Robbins, as my guest. Wren is a podcast strategist and host of the Don't Wing It podcast, where she shares super short and impactful episodes full of strategies for podcast hosts. For those of you who have been listening to Christian podcasts for a while, you might recognize Wren as host of the popular Friends of a Feather podcast. After six years hosting Friends of a Feather and recording over 200 episodes and interviews, Wren's learned a thing or two about hosting a podcast, and now she helps Christian entrepreneurs launch a podcast that markets their business and their books while they sleep. I was an avid listener of Friends of a Feather, and then Wren and I connected personally through an Instagram coaching membership led by our amazing friend, Ruthie Gray. And y'all, it's been so fun to watch Wren build a new brand as a podcast coach. Her Instagram reels are so entertaining and educational, and her passion for podcasters shines through. I couldn't wait to dig in and ask Ren all our burning questions about podcasting, both as a host and a guest, especially how authors can pitch as guests and talk about their books in different ways, and also how hosts can title their episodes creatively so listeners don't see the same title over and over when they see authors on podcast tours. So I'm so excited, y'all. You're in for a treat. So let's get to it. Hey, Ren, welcome to the Book Marketing Mania podcast. I'm so glad you're here today. I love the name of your podcast, Kim, Mania. When you just say (laughs) mania, I'm like, yes, I'm here for it. (laughs) Uh, I know we are all over the place. We talk about everything under the umbrella of book marketing, including podcasting, which is why we have sweet Ren here today. And I'm so glad uh, to get you on the show just to talk about all the things podcasting. And I'm always seeing you share on Instagram, which is where we connected. And um, I'm just so anxious for my listeners to hear what you have to share today. So y'all heard me gush about Ren in the introduction. Um, So Ren, let's just dive into podcasting. And again, we're just going to go all over the place. But first off, I definitely want to say congratulations because just yesterday, Ren's new podcast, Don't Wing It, was listed in the top 50 moms in podcasting by Podcast Magazine. And that is so huge. Uh, accomplishment and it's such a great shout out for your show which is amazing for everybody wanting to start a podcast so congratulations to you Rin. thank you so much you know it is all grace I, it really is it's god's grace because i get to do this i get to be full-time mom and i get to be full-time entrepreneur so it's it's ah what a what a sweet thing the lord gave me Yeah, so fun. And, you know, that magazine reaches, you know, such a huge audience, you know, outside of our Christian niche. And you just never know who's going to stumble upon it and want to turn it on and uh, be able to listen to all the encouragement that you share on people wanting to start a podcast. So that's super fun. And that is one of the things I definitely wanted to start off with is Mm -hmm. a lot of our authors that that listen or, you know, they're in, they could even be bloggers, right? They're just thinking about writing their first book and trying to figure out how to build their platform, how to attract a publisher. Um, Can you just give us a little bit of encouragement on, you know, getting started? Like they can obviously go um, listen to all your podcast episodes and I highly recommend it, the Don't Wing It podcast, but so many people, you know, they, they, think about starting a podcast. I mean, I can put myself into that column as well. And they just put it off for so long because they think it's so hard to get started or they, you know, not sure is anybody going to listen to it and um, all those things. So when somebody is thinking about starting a podcast, you know, how do you encourage them just to, to, just to get going, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, obviously they don't want to wing it on their own, but how can they just get started and start serving their listeners? Well, I'm going to say I used to teach kindergarten. And so we would read a lot of Dr. Seuss books. And you know, the one where he says, um, there is no one more youer than you. And Mm. so I want to encourage you that you have gifts and talents that God has given you that only you have, and only you can share them in your way. And so I don't want you to have the comparison to others to say, oh, well, she's already said all the things. Um, People already know that. Why would I, what do I have? What kind of value do I have to add? And so I want you to get those lies out of your head. It really goes back to a lot of mindset is to, to really know that you have gifts and talents to offer and that you want to offer others that. So that's the first thing I would say. And then I would say number two is jump in with Mm -hmm. both feet. 
because we only have one life to live. And so I think that was a soap opera in the day, right? Yeah. But, <laughs> That's why we're showing our age but, now. Yeah, it, yeah, we are. And so, but we really do. We only have one life to live. So let's do what we know God's called us to do. And let's step over that fear threshold and just jump in with both feet. Now, I will get, I will say that you want to set up, like if you're toying around the podcast idea, I think that's awesome and great. And usually the clients that I meet with are saying, I've been told I need to start a podcast or Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to start a podcast for years. And it's amazing. And and it is, I I get it. I I, I do get it. Uh, But I would encourage them, encourage you to jump in and then set it up the right way the first time you know, mm-hmm. don't jump, jump in without having some guidance. Cause there is a strategy to it and you mm-hmm. want it to be beneficial to your business, to your ministry, to your plat, you know, having a platform, but you want to set it up the, the right way the first time. So mm-hmm. all those things, mindset, jumping in with both feet and then setting it up the right way. Yeah. Oh gosh. Those are such great tips. And I know things can change over time. And, you know, you're a great example of that after hosting your friends of the feather podcast, which is an amazing podcast. I'm sure a lot of my listeners tune into and uh, sadly it has come to uh, the end of the season for that podcast. So it's been awesome. And kudos to you, Ren, because I mean, how many years did you host that podcast? I hosted it for six years. And I will say this going back to that, I jumped in with both feet. However, Mm -hmm. I jumped in with both feet to start the podcast, Mm -hmm. but I didn't have any strategy. I did not have any clue. (laughs) I knew God had called me to it and I started it and then jumped in as I started one, one episode a month. Uh And then a few months went by and then I did two. And then I I was up to four, a few minutes, a few months later. And so Uh it is, I like to see when people jump into it and then, but get the strategy that you need. For yeah. It. So, yeah, it was six years. I yeah, can't that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I love that you talk about strategy because that's you know that is definitely something near and dear to my heart. And I do think yeah, it takes time right to record a podcast and to market it. And you want to do it well, and so definitely um, get somebody like Ren in your corner just to kind of talk through. Yeah, what is your strategy? Like, what are you trying to do with the podcast, especially for authors? You know, are you just building your platform in the very beginning? Are you wanting to market a book you have coming out, or you know, you have may have courses and um, coaching things you're trying to market? But I think. It's it's really helpful to have somebody to kind of coach you through that and know that your topics are going to lead the listeners naturally where you want them to go and things like that. So obviously with uh, Friends of a Feather, like you said, your, you know, your episodes changed over time. Like you started in one place and then went to a different place with your um, frequency. And that's what's so great for people to hear is just you're not locked into one thing, right? When you start it, you know, um, you can change it over time. It's your own show. And and like you, you know, if you decide that that season is done and you want to put it down, you can do that. So I want to give also a kudos to you, Ren, because as somebody that does a lot of research on podcasts, finding new shows to pitch clients to, I was so, I mean, I was so heartbroken when I saw that episode pop up, you know, that it was ending, but at the same time, I was like, thank God you told us it was ending, right? You didn't just Mm. like fade off into the Neverlands and we never heard from you again. Um, So, you know, why do you think that happens? I mean, I know everybody gets busy and stuff, but you know, there's so many shows that pop up that you find on, you know, your podcast player, they pop up and you see they haven't released an episode in a really long time, but there was no indication they were going away or if they're ever coming back. So (laughs) How would you tell our listeners if they do want to take a little break um, or if they do just need to put their podcast down for a while, how do you recommend they go about that? I know you talked about it on your podcast. I'm definitely going to link that episode up, but I don't know if you have some encouragement today. Yeah, absolutely. They say that after seven episodes of a podcast that there is a high percentage, I don't know what the percentage is, but there's Mm -hmm. a high percentage that people will uh, stop podcasting. Like Mm -hmm. they won't even get to seven. So um, you're doing awesome because you're oh, way over you. seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that is so important to know that, that it, that it's called pod fade. They get mm-hmm. burned out. They just go gun hold. They don't have a strategy. They don't have a laser focus. And so it's really important for authors and coaches and bloggers to know what their mission is. What mm-hmm. is their mission of the business? Because that's got to be the center of your podcast or you're not going to follow through. You're not going to continue it. It has to be fun and it has to be manageable. You know, Mm -hmm. that's the thing about me is that, you know, I had started don't wing it while I was still doing friends of a feather. And so balancing two different podcasts were, was, it was 
uh, interesting Mm -hmm. and it was very time consuming. So, and I still had an editor and I had a VA, but it was uh, very time consuming. And so I want people to know that, yes, you, um, you want to know that you have whatever that mission is for your business is that you want to continue on, but it's really about communication. Mm -hmm. So if you take a break, or even if you take the summer off to spend, maybe you're, you have kids at home still, Mm -hmm. and you really want to spend more time with them or cut back episodes. It, like you said, Kim, it's your podcast. You get to choose, you Mm -hmm. get to choose what you do. And so what I would say is just be fully truthful and, and communicate with your audience. They are your listeners. They're, they're looking at you to give them content and they're looking to you. You're a friend. I I can't tell you how many people that I have connected with. You are one of them Mm -hmm. through the friends of a feather. It's incredible. And so we're your friends. So you want to communicate with your friends, right? Mm -hmm. So just make sure you say, Hey guys, this is what season one is ending and season two will be back. You don't have to give a date. Just say Mm -hmm. it'll be back soon. Um, Or like me, I knew it was coming to an end. And I said, if you want to continue listening, go back to listen to all these other episodes that you maybe have missed. Or if you want to hear me every week for five minutes about podcasting, then go to Don't Wing It. So Mm -hmm. just fully communicate that. I think communication is key because when I go and I am looking for somebody to come on my show, uh, when I did it with the Friends of the Feather, I would go to their social media. I would go to their podcast if they had one and to mm-hmm. see the frequency. And also, did they just drop off and never return? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I help people with their relaunch because I know life gets in the way. Yeah. And so yeah. give grace to yourself if that's you, but then come back and say, hey, we're back to the next season and, mm-hmm. and go from there, you know, just, yeah. just move on. Yeah. I think that's, those are great points. And um, yeah, and you've done it with two different podcasts, like just, you know, having two different um, strategies. I mean, I love that your don't wing it is just five minutes and it sounds so short, but holy cow, you can get a lot in five minutes. right? And and for the listener, that's a lot for them to take in and then go implement. And that's what I've just been evaluating on my own show is it, you know, I really need to cut back on the length. I mean, I cut back and went to every two weeks so people could have a little bit more time to implement, but now I'm realizing, I think people want a little bit shorter episodes. So, uh, and yours, I mean, I'm just blown away because I hear you talk and then I'm like, wow, that was only five minutes. Cause you know, you just gained so much and there's such good take ways, but I love that you have one show that is five minutes every week. You have another show that's longer because you're doing interviews. Um, you know, you can do it however you want. And like Ren said, you could take a break and Hey, have you, um, I was going to ask you, have you had any clients that have done like the capsule podcast? I don't, I mean, I hear capsule, I hear, um, I know private podcast is another term, maybe a different version of that, but where they just have a podcast for a set amount of episodes only this I think is the most underutilized Mm -hmm. form of podcasting there is. I get fired up about this because, and and on don't wing it, it's coming out this coming Monday. So Uh whenever this this airs, it's, it's, it's probably in the works or it is in the works. It's probably, it's coming out Monday, uh, the second of second week of May. So, uh, but this is what I'm talking about because a lot of people get held back from starting a podcast because Mm -hmm. of time. And listen, I get it. When you do an interview podcast every week, that is a lot of time that you put Mm -hmm. into it. I get it. I've been there. And so there are other ways. And I share three different ways on that episode to, um, to share or to start your podcast with not putting a ton of time into it. So Mm -hmm. I share three of those, but one of them is to do a one and done. I call it set it and forget it podcast. Mm -hmm. And that is a perfect way for you to take six to 12 episodes. It's really up to you. Uh, Six to 12 episodes of those dynamic, um, the dynamic episodes that you want people to come to your business to know things Mm -hmm. that you want them to know. And then you forward them back to your business and then you forward them back to your coaching or to your call to action, whatever call to action you have, like to your not call to action, your Mm opt-in. And so I love the idea. It is for those multi-passionate entrepreneurs, multi-passionate, maybe authors that Mm -hmm. have maybe different subjects and they don't want to do a whole podcast, but just want like a six to eight, six to 12 episode of, and you set it, you literally go and launch it just like you would normally launch. Mm -hmm. And then you set it and then you pay a monthly fee. That's so, I think it's $5 for me to keep 
bends of a feather on wow, through Libsyn. Okay. And so it's five dollars a month. You and that's your marketing uh-huh. money that you put into it. Yeah. And then that's that's it. And you set it and you forget it. And it is continually pointing to your business. I can't uh-huh. tell you how under uh, estimated that form of podcasting is. And it's really a great way to save time. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I've been talking to a lot of people about that. And it's so unknown, at least in our niche, and it seems to yep. be very unknown um, because so many people, yeah, they don't want to make that long commitment. And it's like, okay, well, why don't you just, you could, you could take a certain topic, right. And, and dive into it in these episodes. You could, you could even do interviews. I mean, I was talking to somebody about, I think one really cool way to use that is like when you're, and I want to talk to you about, obviously about podcast pitching and guesting, but um. I was, you know, like swaps are so big right now, right? With podcast hosts, it's so fun to do swaps because you get to, you get to serve different audiences and that's a great way to grow your own show. But, um, you know, people that don't have a podcast to swap with, I'm like, you know what you could do just this kind of a capsule idea, but again, go into it very strategically and get somebody like ran in your corner because you could really think through how could I invite, you know, who are the people I would want to uh, swap with, you know, and then I could invite mm-hmm. them to be on this special podcast. And I just love that it just like any podcast, it just lives there forever. Right. And if you go it Google does. your name, your podcast always comes up. I mean, it just, it, does. it doesn't matter when it is and it just never gets old. So um, yeah, I'm so glad I'm, glad I'm so excited for you to have that episode because yeah, I think that I totally agree. I think that's so underutilized and such a great way that, you know, everybody should be definitely taking advantage of it. Um Okay. So I asked you about taking a break. I definitely wanted to ask you about that. So let's, so go back to friends of the feather. Cause I'm sure as all the interviews you did, I know you had to have gotten pitched a ton of <laughs> guests, you know, from PR agencies or the guests themselves. And I would just love to hear from you for our audience that's wanting to pitch their book or even just pitch their message as they build their platform. What really stood out to you in a pitch that you got in your inbox as a podcast host? Mm. I love this question because I love to give my advice on this. <laughs> Good, <laughs> but yes, over over the six years, I was pitched many many times, and I I love that. I think that's great that they are in my inbox saying, "Hey, I want you on my show." I think that is so flattering and humbling and exciting. Mm-hmm. And I remember my first pitch, and I was just like, oh, "They want me on their show? Oh. Like how sweet, you know? <laughs> like it was it was a big deal." So uh, the best way for me for someone to pitch to me is to first follow me on the most active social media that I am on and to interact with me as a person. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I love that. I think that is all about communication and it's all about that community Mm -hmm. and being social and just those uh, relationships that you can build through social media, because that's what mm-hmm. it's for anyway, is social, right, you know, yeah, being social, yeah. right? We've forgotten about a lot about that, but, uh, I have responded so much more to someone when they follow me on Instagram, because I'm very highly, uh, involved in mm-hmm. Instagram and some people are on Facebook. So it's right. like, you gotta find where they are most active, uh, when they're most engaging and follow them there and then interact with them, like their post comment on their posts, share their episodes. That's huge. Share their Mm -hmm. episodes, leave a review on Mm -hmm. their episodes. And then, and then you can take that step in email and say, Hey, uh, I love what you're doing on social media. I think this is how it can pair with what I'm my message. I think this is how it can help your audience. Um, and most of the time I'm going to say yes, Mm -hmm. because they have taken that step. Now, if it's somebody that is Um, maybe it's the content is something that um, is something I just recorded about. I'm probably not going to be able to take them up on it because of the timing. Maybe I can Mm -hmm. record for later. I'm thinking of friends of a feather. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I do a deep dive. So like I will go to your, before I accept, I will go to your social media and I will do a deep dive. And Mm -hmm. if there's anything that's negative, Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh yeah, (laughs) I'm I'm going to probably be like, "Eh, sorry, no, it's Uh just, and that's my personal, listen, Mm -hmm. I do deep dive because I do that. I dig for when I am having people on my show, Mm -hmm. not that I'm looking for perfection, of course not, but I am looking for somebody that I feel like I want to hear them speak. Mm -hmm. I might go to listen to an episode that they've been on somebody else's show so I can hear how they speak. Um, I'm going to also go to their social media, like I said, and just hear them on stories talking. I'm going to see how much they are on video just so that I can hear them Mm -hmm. uh, if they have a podcast. So all of those things, but I uh, love when somebody 
interacts with me on social media first, then comes to me through email. And then it's just the timing is right. It really is. A lot of Mm -hmm. it is timing about the certain subjects. And then I will say um, recently somebody, after I had finished wrapping up friends of a feather for now, and she reached out over video and it was, it was an email, but it was a video. And she talked about eat, read, love. And she said, mm-hmm. Oh, this is what I'm eating, reading, and loving. You probably said, it. but anyway, she said, eat, reading, and loving, because that's what I did at the end of every uh-huh. single episode. Yeah. Of friends of feather. So number one, I knew she listened to my podcast. Uh-huh. Number two, I thought it was a very clever and yeah. a way to put it. and I would have totally had her on the show. I was like, yeah. I'm so sorry. I just ended. So video, video is so big. That's amazing. That's, yeah. I just like hearing people's hearts. Uh-huh. And so that there, that's a lot of things, but if yeah. you do, you know, a few of those that really helps. For yeah, sure. that's huge. No, and I, I love, we did a whole episode on building relationships with podcast hosts before pitching because yes, I, I'm a firm believer in that. And I know you and I have talked about this um, in our Instagram posts that we both um, have only, we both have guested on several podcasts, but only by invite, like neither one of us have ever pitched because we yeah. do, it's so important to us to build relationships with people. And then they, they naturally ask you, you know, to come and serve their audiences. And it's so great. Um, and then, yeah. you know, just you talking about, um, you know, I talk about getting your home base ready before pitching, which I'm so mm-hmm. glad you talked about how you check them out from a podcast host standpoint, right? Cause I'm, I'm looking at it from a guest standpoint going, okay, if you're going to pitch, you know, you got to make sure your home base is ready because that host is going to come looking. So I'm so glad you validated yeah. that. that, that yes, really does happen, absolutely. You know what I mean? And I usually am like, hey, if you've been on a podcast, mention it because that way they can click over and listen. And yeah. Um, yeah, and just, you know, making sure that, yeah, I mean, social media, right? There's there's so many things we can do with social media. And I know, you know, sometimes it's place to air things that we get frustrated with, but right. we just have to remember, yeah, just if it's, you know, if you're pitching a podcast or a podcast host is looking at a guest that, you know, you do want to go check them out and make sure that your values align. And, um, you know, we've had that a couple of times where we've gone, we thought we were going to pitch a show, but then yeah, you go check out and see something on their Instagram and you're like, yeah, no, (laughs) I don't think Mm -hmm. this is going to be a match at all, which is such a bummer, right? Because you could really serve their listeners well, but it's just not going to, yeah, it's not going to do anything for you if it's, if it's, you know, if it doesn't jive together. So, well, um, and you have to be on that. Yeah. And you have to be aligned, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and with friends of a feather, it was very, it was much more stringent for me because it was a, a a podcast about faith Mm -hmm. and God stories. And I took that very seriously. And so I I think that that was a little different than don't wing it, but it is still something I like doing to be dives girl, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, we do. We do like to nerd out on all that and get to know people. And, and that's the other thing, like I'm a big, you know, and I don't, mass pitch, you know, I don't do the cookie cutter pitches. And I think that, you know, sometimes I know there's a place for it, right? Sometimes a book launch, like they're just trying to get somebody pitches out the door. I totally get it. But even the follow-up that could be super unique, but I love that you shared somebody pitched you in a video because I think that is the coolest thing. Like, obviously they listen to the show and you can't do that if you're mass pitching or cookie cutter Mm -mm. pitching. And, Mm -mm. you know, so many people are like, I really want to be on this one show so bad. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, we'll go build a relationship and listen to that show and find some little connection points you can mention in your pitch. And I think that obviously, like you just said, it goes so much further um, than all the other pitches that land in your inbox. So I love hearing about that. And also another thing about that video email, it was only like one minute long, oh, it was 60 seconds long. So it that. wasn't like this whole long 20 minute, five minute dissertation. Uh-huh. It was one minute. And it was probably it was just awesome. super personal, right? They're just popping up yes. their phone and doing so a quick video. It's not like some big yes. video production. No, and yeah, not at all. Just, oh, Ain't I, nobody I, got I time for that. that so much. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And you know, and we, we're, especially in our niche, I mean, it's a small world. All of us hosts like to talk to each other. And, you know, yes. it's like, if we're talking about a book, we just, you know, heard about or got a pitch and then it's mm-hmm. like, oh, that pitch, you got the exact same pitch. That's interesting. You know, yes. uh, but also on the flip side of that is one of the agencies that I support, we had pitched somebody we thought it was a great fit. And it, we, I mean, in our eyes, it was a great fit, but it wasn't a fit for the host content calendar, which I totally understand, but they were so sweet. Like, you know, a lot of times we just don't hear back. Right. And then, and yeah. or, you know, we hear back, it's not a fit or, you know, we're full or whatever. Right. Um, but this host, like, they replied back and said, you know, we just don't think it's a fit at this time, but we want to introduce you to somebody else we do think yes. you're a fit for. And I mean, they immediately had the follow-up email saying, hey, here's so-and-so, meet so-and-so, I'll let y'all take it from there. And the host immediately was like, oh my gosh, absolutely. How soon can I book her? And I'm like, yes. oh, I wish more hosts would do that. You know, <laughs> you're right. And I, all I, relational, right? All it is. And I think it's, it's helping others. It's like, well, I'm not a fit, but look, somebody else can. And I've done that a few times. I haven't done it as much as I should have, but I have done it a 
a few times. And I think they appreciate it so much when you do that because you're putting somebody else in contact with somebody. Yeah. Hey, I want to ask you too, again, because I'm sure you've been through this with Friends of a Feather and interviewing authors. When you see at launch time, everybody's on the pod, you know, doing a podcast tour, for lack of a better word. It just seems like it's always the exact same content. So you're like, oh gosh, how many times am I going to listen to this? You know, I can only listen to it once. But there's so many stories that you could be telling out of your book that, you know, maybe they heard it over here Mm -hmm. and they didn't buy the book, but then they hear the second story. They're like, oh my gosh, I have to buy that book, you know? So what Mm -hmm. tips could you share maybe for authors to think about that as they are pitching, you know, more than one, one podcast at launch time? I love this question because of the fact that, you know, in somebody's book, they're going to have more than one or two. I mean, Yes, it's going to be an overarching theme, but they're going to have so Mm -hmm. much content that they can pull from. And so what I suggest is pull from like three or four main themes from your book. And yes, it's going to be one overarching theme, arching theme, but to pick those four sub themes. And then when you're pitching to someone or when you're asking them to, to, you know, invite them on your, their podcast, um, then I would look at what that specific podcasters Mm -hmm. um, niche is. So like mine was friends of a feather. And if they had looked, you know, a little further, they would, somebody would have seen, Mm -hmm. okay, she shares God's stories. Okay. So I maybe didn't share my God story in the Mm -hmm. book, or maybe I did. It's a sub theme. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pitch that way where I am saying, Hey, she's sharing God's stories. I'm going to say, Hey, um, I have an amazing God story that led up to this, the writing of this book, something mm, yeah. that maybe nobody knows. Maybe it's not in the book. Maybe it's a sub theme. Yes. Maybe it's the first part of the book. Yeah. Do that. Maybe then there's another episode, uh, mm-hmm. another podcast about rest. And so maybe it's about spiritual rest or um, uh, all the different types of rest. Okay. And so, or rest as a mompreneur. Well, then they would say, oh, I'm a mompreneur and, um, and this Mm -hmm. these couple of chapters were about rest or they were specifically about how a mompreneur can balance things. Then you would pitch that portion and not even like, Hey, I can talk Mm -hmm. on this, 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 just specifically pull that part about rest and say, Hey, this is something that I, in chapter six and seven in my book was, it was a really turning point for me, you know, can I, this is how we can work together. I think this would benefit your audience because of this. So you have to look, and that's why I love when people are so um, Mm -hmm. niche down in their podcasts, because if they are, and it's just not just wide as anything, then that's when you can get pitched better. And then people know exactly Mm -hmm. what you want to have on the show. And so those are some, some ways to do that. And I think it's genius. And I think um, probably flipping it around. I mean, you probably have some tips for podcast host to maybe how they title their episodes. Like just, that's just like a little pet peeve of mine. Like, you know, cause usually it's, I mean, mm-hmm. I can understand, you know, if, if you're, you're trying to get listeners and you have some huge guests, like sure. You just want to put their name and their book name and that's going to draw, you know, a huge crowd to listen. I totally understand right, that. But right. when it's, again, when you have multiple shows doing that, then you, you just feel like you see that and you're going to get the exact same message. But um, do you have any tips for those that are tuning in for a podcast host that how they can kind of tweak their subject line. So maybe they can look around has the, has the, you know, guests been on other shows and so they can make sure they maybe title it a little bit different. So, you know, I'm just thinking like, I know like behind the scenes when I used to do marketing for authors, it was like, you know, I'd go pull the episode to share on their social and I would go have to listen to it or look through the show notes to find some other way to share it because then you're just looking down an author's social and it's all the same. So, you know, there's so many different ways to look at that. So I'm sure you have some tips to share on that too. Oh, absolutely. And, and know this, that it is searchable on podcast apps. And so the title is searchable. So that's the cool thing about it is that you can name it. uh, It's going to stick out when it is named either like a subtitle or something Mm -hmm. in the podcast episode. And so I have been so guilty when I was first starting out, I would list their book Mm -hmm. and their name and that's it. And that's what I would call. I I don't think I put their name in there. Like really (laughs) run, come on run. But it would just be the title of the book. Like, oh my word. Like let's, yeah. yeah. And I'm talking to myself, like Ren, let's be a little Mm -hmm. bit creative here. You know what I mean? And so, because their title of their book is going to be in the show notes, it's going to be in the body of your, of your show notes or your blog post or whatever. Um, so I definitely think though, a little hack that I like to do is yes, you can 
you know, what y'all talked about, the overarching thing theme. Um, but then I'll go to Pinterest and I'll type in kind of what we're talking about, like time management. And that can pull up a lot. Yeah. You're not going to steal somebody's uh, title of their episode, but it will give you some more creative juices so that you can, you know, look on Pinterest and just type in time management or mm-hmm. time management for the mompreneur or whatever. And then it'll give you a lot of different things, then close mm-hmm. it out and then brain dump and just brain dump everything and then see how you can form it together. But definitely look at um, not just putting the title, not just putting the author's name, but also, mm-hmm. I mean, you can still leave the author's name, you know, but instead of taking back your time with Christy Wright, you can go to Pinterest mm-hmm. and look up time management, you know, time management yeah. strategies with Christy Wright, you know, something that's a little bit different so that it is mm-hmm. something and always go practical. If you can do anything, go practical. <laughs> Okay, so let's yeah. talk about sharing your podcast, whether you're a podcast host or a podcast guest, because I need yeah. all the tips on this, of course. So let's talk about, well, let me, so let me, this, I'm sorry, y'all, but the, I've just got a, another pet peeve of mine as a listener. Okay, Ren. So is, mm-hmm. you know, when I hear a really great podcast, then I'm like, I'm going to hop over to Instagram and share this with my followers. So I anticipate that I'm going to hop over to Instagram. I'm going to see that on the host feed. And so that I could quickly just hit my little airplane icon to share it to my story. But so much lately, I don't see those, you know, like, and so I don't know, is that a thing? Like you don't share, don't share them in your Instagram feed. Like, is there some, you know, rule or engagement or, you know, with Instagram or something that people aren't doing that? You're like, why do you think people aren't doing that as much anymore? That's a great question because that's where Mm -hmm. I am right now with don't wing it. Um, With friends of a feather, Mm -hmm. I always shared it because it was also a guest was also dependent on me Mm -hmm. so that they could share it to their stories or share it to their feed or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, reposted or whatever. So I was very clear about that. I think I went through a few, maybe a few weeks or months without doing that and just putting up a quote Mm -hmm. that they said instead, or doing a carousel where it was that, but, Mm -hmm. um, but I don't wing it. I don't do that. I do, however, have a clip from headliner, but it is not the normal quote, uh, uh, not the normal, Mm -hmm. uh, podcast artwork. And then just the fuzzy Mm -hmm. line and the captions. It's different. It's a picture that I had professionally done and it is of me and, and I will have the graphic, Mm -hmm. uh, you can do this in Canva or you can do it in headliner. I'm sorry. Headliner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know about that, but, um, where you do the little, uh, icon of the podcast in the corner Mm -hmm. and then have the caption there. And so that they can know that that's there, but I have seen that a lot as well. And I'll tell you one thing is a lot of people, um, were not interacting on the ones of friends of a feather. Mm -hmm. When I had a guest on, they would not interact with just just the the still, still not the headliner, but the still, um, it was, yeah, it was, it, they were not interacting as much. Number one, because I would post mm-hmm. it the morning it came out. Well, they hadn't had time to listen to it. And so they didn't even mm-hmm. have any comments to add to that. So I started doing it where I would list a question, like mm-hmm. an interacting engagement instead right. of yeah. go listen to the episode. Because after you see that so many times, it's, it, I mean, even mm-hmm. me, I was just mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't want to see this anymore. So more of engagement and then not necessarily go listen, but say, you know, Mm -hmm. she shared three tips on this. Here's one. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this one? You know, more engaging content instead of just Mm -hmm. posting it and saying, go listen. Yeah. Um, Because people get tired of that. Mixing it up. Yeah. It's really mixing it up, seeing what works for you. Because now when you did, you did this recently. um, I love video and Mm -hmm. video is just what people are like just drawn to nowadays. Mm -hmm. Uh, short video, short form, like a minute or less. And, um, and so what I've been doing is putting uh, clips of, or will be doing, I, my VA is doing this for Mm me uh, today, actually, but doing the clips Mm -hmm. of like, if I record on zoom or record on Riverside or wherever that it's recording, then I will um, give it to her. She pulls out a clip of me when it's a monologue Mm -hmm. and putting it on social media. And those are incredibly like, I am drawn to those. Mm -hmm. So do what you're drawn to. Like Kim, you had one recently and I was so drawn to it. It was when you had another Mm -hmm. um, guest on. And so you could see both of you on the screen. It was Mm -hmm. entirely engaging. And so I literally saw that and I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that. 
I bet that was Parshell's author. Yeah, I bet it was author's leverage oh. podcast. No, because I got so many comments on that. So many people DM me about that episode, Parshell. So thank you again for See? having me on. Uh, yeah, so that she had her team do that. And you're right, because yeah. I, I immediately emailed them. I was like, how did you okay. do this? Because I should be doing this more and I have it. But um, well, and I appreciate you saying yeah. that because I was thinking like one, right? This the static image. I mean, I was thinking two things like, Obviously, Instagram isn't loving the static images lately, so I could see where they probably didn't even show it to your followers. Right. Um, but I can see that maybe not the most right. engaging piece. But like that's what my eye thinks of. Like I think I'm just going to go find that image and share it. But any, yeah. I mean, any mention of your podcast in any kind of video or anything, and of course, you are crushing it on Reels, and we'll talk about that in a second. Oh, yeah. But you know, anything that I would find in your feed, I could then <laughs> share it, right? Because I understand, like from the you know, from a host with a yeah. guest. Your tip, you might share it in your stories, but you can just tag your guest and then they get the notification and they can reshare. But, but just for your listeners and the feed to have something right. to engage with. But I love that, yeah, you can just think outside the box to what is Instagram favoring right now, right now it is video content, right? It's so like what you're saying, you know, post some short yes. video content. So whether you're a host or a guest um, using video is great. And Brent, you you do an amazing example of this. And I know that you and um, both of our Instagram Thank coach, uh, the amazing Ruthie Gray, she uh, has helped both of us with that, yes. but you've been fantastic about implementing it. So everybody yes. needs to be sure and check out Ren's Instagram <laughs> for real. So again, that's something else that so many of Sweet. us, including Thank myself, you. really hesitate on getting on video, you know, like, it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to say the wrong thing. Yes. or I'm going to look, you know, I'm not looking the right way or whatever. <laughs> Will you just give us some tips on that? Cause you have so much fun and it's so much fun for us to watch you having fun while we're also learning about this incredible, oh, you know, podcasting world and starting your own podcast and being strategic about it. So will you share just, you know, with authors, how they can think about maybe taking advantage of the real technology and getting over the fear of it? <laughs> I'm going to say what I said in the beginning what Dr. Seuss says, you are the only person that can share the mm -hmm. skills that you have. And so I'm going to say that as you, there's no one more you are than you. And so you might look at others and say, well, she is acting a <laughs> fool on Insta stories or on Instagram reels. I would never do mm -hmm. that. Okay. You don't have to do it like her. You don't have to do it, you know, with the, the dancing or the singing or the pointing. You don't, there are many other ways mm -hmm. you can do it without even showing your face. Now I'm going to still say show your face, but show your face, but there are other ways to do it. So if you really have a fear of that, I'm going to encourage you to step over that fear threshold. Nothing that you, we do well, um, it's going to be without mm -hmm. uncomfortableness. I'm realizing as my business has gone on and on. And so just take that step and people are wanting to share a tip. And here's a, a thing. And uh, is start in stories. That's what Ruthie's taught us is start in stories, start sharing in stories with a circle on your Instagram and just hold it in front of your face and say, now I will say this, <laughs> stand in front of a window so that the lighting is good and and hold mm -hmm. the phone above your head, mm -hmm. not below your head, because if it's below <laughs> your head, you're going to have 10 chins. Ask know, me oh how <laughs> I know. Okay. Ask me how I know. So yes, you need to do mm -hmm. that. And use a filter, just use a filter. It's fine. Like don't use right, one that yeah, is the Botox yeah. lips. Like don't use that, but just use the filter. I love mm -hmm, it's called, yeah. um, honey. And I use that all the time because it's like, why am I so a bad thing? Hold it and stand in front of a window and say, I want to share one tip with you about how mm -hmm. to blah, blah, blah. And then that's it. It's 15 seconds, turn it off, boom. And then you'll get more comfortable and then you'll do it in your um, feed. And sometimes you just have to, just like I said at the beginning as well, mm -hmm. as you got to jump in, you just got to jump in and do it little at a time. And then a lot of people want mm -hmm. to know what's going on. Behind yeah. The scenes. Oh yeah. I know you've yeah. probably seen this, Kim, that people want mm -hmm. to see behind the scenes. We're all nosy. We want to be up in everybody's business. And so whenever I do that, mm -hmm. I always get tons of comments uh, in my stories because behind the scenes, it just, it, it's, it's interesting. So yeah, I need to do more of that, but you're right. That's where I get the most engagement too in my DMs. Like I just get more engagement on DMs than on anything. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, that fun behind the scenes stuff that that's good. You know, people can relate to you, right? We're like, we just talked about it. It's all 
all about building relationships with people. And so, yeah, if you're wanting to build a relationship with a host that you want to pitch to, you know, get in the DMs and start connecting with them. And it's not about your book. It is about the relationship and all the personal connection points and yeah, yes. just have fun with it. So, okay. Well, we have obviously been all over the place yeah. like we always do on Book Marketing Mania. <laughs> uh, it's not called Book Marketing Mania for nothing, but um, <laughs> I love it. to wrap it up, but Rit, it's been so awesome. You've given so it. many great tips and just been all over the place, like I said, with podcast hosting and guesting. And I would just love for you to share where our listeners can connect with you because I know many of them are going to want to hop over and check out your podcast as well as your podcast coaching services. Awesome. Thank you so much for the opportunity for asking me. I love helping women that are entrepreneurs that want to do a podcast and don't know where to start. And I take you literally step by step six week one-on-one coaching mm-hmm. with me. I love one-on-one. I choose it for a reason. And uh, it's got all the bells and whistles and downloads and Voxer access and all the things for me. So you can book a call at renrobins.com forward slash book a call. And it's W-R-E-N-R-O-B-B-I-N-S.com forward slash book a call. And then I wanted to say, when we were just talking about reels, I do have a free download. If y'all would want to grab it, it is... Um, fun ways to repurpose your podcast episodes into Instagram, into Instagram video. And so if you want to grab that, I will put that and I will give that to you for the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's the thing. Yeah. We didn't even get into that. It could be like a whole other episode. I know with you, Ren was just, yeah, just how to repurpose, you know, there's so much stuff, <laughs> yeah. right. That, um, we have mm-hmm. content all over the place, but especially coming from our podcast, there's just so much good stuff. And, and I tell often my clients, you know, like just really yeah. like the interviews that you have, you know, like go to Otter and get those transcribed. Cause there's so many nuggets in there that you can then turn into podcast episodes or other guest episodes or social media content. And yeah, there's yes. just so much, so much stuff to get. So, so much oh, good yeah. stuff. We love it all. We so love much. it all in order now. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Rian. I so yeah. appreciate your time today. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was so fun. Definitely. Y'all, I hope you took lots of notes as Rin dropped her nuggets on hosting and guesting on podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes on the blog at bookmarketingmania.com. And I'll also link it here in your podcast player so you can get all the goodies Rin and I mentioned on the show. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you back here in two weeks to help you market your book one podcast at a time.